guys, I'm back with another daily devotional. This is again from the Hugs Daily Inspirations for Women. You can find this book on Amazon.com. It does retail for $15.99 in the US, $18.99 in Canada, but I'm sure on Amazon you can find it a little bit cheaper. You might even be able to find it on Prime Raleigh, Raleigh chair. Um, today's topic is your positive influence, and it's taken from Colossians 3.16, which reads, instruct and direct one another using good common sense. All of us serve as powerful examples to young people, friends, and family members. That's a lot of influence and a big responsibility. Daniel Webster wrote, if we work in marble, it will perish. If we work upon br brass, time will efface it. But if we work upon immortal minds and install them in them just principles, we are then engraving upon tablets which no time will efface, but which will brighten and brighten to all eternity. What a great reminder of the glorious opportunities available to us whenever we are willing to serve as positive role models. God has placed people along our path, people he intended for you to influence. Every time you serve as a good example, you help to reshape the world into a better place. And Sophie, Sophie Swetchin, Swetchin, Swetchin reads, there is a trans, transcendent power and example. We reform others unconsciously when, when we walk uprighteously. It's hard to say. I have had um, some really good influences in my life. I'm very blessed that way. Um, even through some of the darkest things that I have gone through in my life, um, I remember as a teenager being in the youth group at my church, and um, Miss Mary and Mr. Bob and Miss uh, Carol and Mr. Dave, Mr. Dave, I don't know why I said it that way, um, were our youth group leaders each at different times. And then there was um, Mr. Bill, but he, he was actually just a little bit older than I was, so it was kind of, it was a different dynamic there, but the two couples that led us through the main, main part of my teenage years really were amazing, amazing people. I was actually jealous because I wanted parents like that because they were soft and they were patient, understanding. But at the same time, they wouldn't let you get away with crap either. Like, if they saw that, you know, if they would catch you in lying or foul language, they would call you out on it and they would correct you. Um, so I'm very blessed that I had that. My grandmother was a huge influence in my life. She was an amazing Christian. And she showed that she wasn't perfect all the time. She made snap judgments sometimes. Sometimes she did use a foul word here or there. Um, but it was almost Im immediately after she would do something like she'd be like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, God forgive me. First, the first thing she would say is, God forgive me. And then she would talk to that person. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, and then in my 20s, I really didn't have a lot of people because my grandmother died when I was 21. I was in a... I can say it, a bad marriage. Um, his family wasn't very supportive, my family wasn't very supportive, so we were kind of floundering. And then when I got with my second husband, his mom and dad were an influence to me because they had this very strong relationship. And he definitely was the man of the house and she was definitely the lady of the house. I mean, she worked outside of the home, but you know, she did come home, make dinner, take care of the kids, take, you know what I mean? Like she, she was the housewife and he was the dad. And, um, but they were very influential to me because if I stepped out of line, they would step back in and be like, no, no, you can't be like that. Um, and then there was another lagging. And for the last two years, I've had amazing pastor and his wife. And even though the last year we weren't in each other's lives in church, he saw everything I posted on Facebook, we remained friends, and when I was being positive, he would lift me a little bit higher, and when I was being negative, he prayed for me. He didn't even have to tell me he prayed for me, I know he prayed for me, I know they both did. And then there was another pastor and his wife, Pastor Lloyd and Miss Marlene, and, and they're an amazing influence as well. So I mean, I've had some very good influences in my life, and I've realized that through the negative influences I've had, there was always either right there positive or right around the corner positive. And I think that's important and it's something I'm trying to teach my kids as they're going through some um, 
I want to say hard, but difficult things to understand and comprehend. Um, and, you know, I try to lift them back up. I try to turn it back onto a positive side of things. And, you know, somebody in the family very close to my daughter had said something about her weight. Um, and and my, my daughter's big. Not big. She's bigger. She's big boned. She's tall for her age. Um, and she is doing what every girl in my family has done. And pre and through puberty chunk up. And then once they come out the other side of puberty, they thin out. And I have a feeling that's probably what she's going to do. Um, I do worry about her weight. And I have conversations with her. But I don't believe in putting a child on a diet at the age of 11. I do give her healthy choices. And right now, I haven't been very healthy. I have not been a positive influence on her. And I will admit that, and I take full responsibility for that. We're getting there. Um, we will get there. And she will see me walking again. She will see me exercising again. She will see me not bringing in the cookies and everything else and bringing in fruits and vegetables. And she will realize, oh, okay. Um, but when this person had said something about her being fat is the word the person used. And she came to me and she goes, Mom, I can't stand it when this person says this stuff to me. I looked at her and I said, that's because inside that person's miserable in their own body. So they're going to try to make you feel the same way they feel. And you have to be better than that and rise above it and say, you know what? God created me a bigger person. I'm never going to be a skinny mini and that's okay with me. As long as I'm healthy, that's what's important to me. And I told her that. I said, I was a bigger girl. I wasn't huge by any means. I was in my teens, like between 14 and 18. I was probably in a size 14, 16. So... Not huge, but bigger than the, the standard quo. Um, I thought I was huge. And when I look back at the pictures, I'm like, oh, I'd love to be that again, you know? It's okay. It's okay, and I was telling her that. So I'm trying to be the, the, the positive influence in her life. Um, so, yeah. And I'm trying to get her. She wants to play basketball. So when they have um, the team open for tryouts, I, I want her to try um, because I think getting her to move every day would be a blessing and we're going to hopefully here soon sign up for the swim um, our, our high school has a pool and they have open swim Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday Sunday, Saturday and Sunday yeah because Monday and Fridays are swim meets so um, so yeah that's, that's what we're going to try to do and we're going to try to go every evening after school so we can work our bodies and it. But you have to be a positive influence, especially with your kids and with those that are hurting. If you see somebody's hurting, the last thing you want to do is go, oh, you're right for feeling that way. I mean, you want to validate that it's okay for them to feel pain, but you don't want to give them an idea to stay there. And that's the problem a lot of people are facing is once they're down, they're down. They just don't want to get back up. So, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you all soon. Bye.